on top of being an educational book, one little spark, I mean, you just read the title and the song just starts playing in your head. It's like you got a free MP3 with the book. It's a brain MP3. So today I'm going to be talking about One Little Spark, Mickey's Ten Commandments and the Road to Imagineering. It is by Disney legend Marty Sklar. He is an Imagineer who has worked with the company back when Walt was still around. He worked on Epcot. He has done a lot of things. So when he puts out a book and you're a Disney fan, it is worth reading. Let's get that out of the way, you know, right at the top. Um, what this book is, is, well, as the title really clearly states, it is about Mickey's Ten Commandments and the road to Imagineering. Mickey's Ten Commandments are ten sort of guiding principles that Imagineers use whenever they're putting together a new project. This book does it in a very creative way that I'm going to get into in a second. The second half of the book, The Road to Imagineering, is a lot of excerpts taken from uh, emails and letters from Imagineers, both current and retired, about what it's like being an Imagineer, how they got into Imagineering, and how you can get into Imagineering as well. Because, you know, among younger people who are excited about Disney, that is a very common question. Uh, so back to the Ten Commandments. This is what interested me most in the book. Uh, I received it as a Christmas gift last month. I was a little weary about it because, you know, it's published by Disney, and I feel like whenever Disney puts out a book, you have to approach it with a grain of salt because they are a company. They have a brand to maintain. They're not going to let all the mud and dirt, you know, come out of the, the wash when they put out a book, so it is going to be a little bit cleaned up. Uh, that said, I was pleasantly surprised because uh, Sklar does not shy away from shortcomings with Imagineering, and they are in this book. But that first half is what I was interested in. I'm not really like looking to become an Imagineer or anything. So I was more interested in like, how do they think when they're putting together a project? And that's what these Ten Commandments do. The way it's formatted is each chapter's a new commandment. Uh, Sklar talks about what that commandment is, what it means, how they approach projects with it. And then what he does, which I think is very interesting, is he gives out two awards for every commandment. He gives out the Mouseker, which is a project that he feels sort of exemplifies that commandment and does it really well. And then he gives out a Goof Award, which is where he thinks a project really fell short on that commandment and wasn't executed as well. And I think it's an interesting insight because as fans, you know, we are thinking about it purely from a fan experience perspective, yet so much more goes into how they design these attractions, and I think that shows through these Ten Commandments. It's a pretty short read, only took me like a day or two. Um, you could almost think of it as two books, you know, you've got that first half, and then right down the middle you go into the second half. Now, The Road to Imagineering uh, is less about Sklar talking himself and more about these excerpts from other Imagineers. He reached out to current and retired Imagineers, had them write about their experiences, and they all sent it back, and he sort of took them and broke them up into themes. So that means there isn't a chapter there about, you know, one specific uh, Imagineer. What it really is, is a chapter about teamwork at Imagineering, and then all these different excerpts from all these different Imagineers about what teamwork is like at Walt Disney Imagineering. Uh, and then of course it obviously covers how they became Imagineers, how you could become Imagineers, what it takes to become an Imagineer. I think one of the things that he stresses in this book that I'm really glad he does because I think it's an important element when you know, you're talking about the potential of becoming an Imagineer is you need to have a passion and you need to be good at that passion. You know, he says there are always two groups when there are kids asking about Imagineering. There are the group of kids who have a passion, whether it's engineering or robotics or writing or some form of art or engineering, and they also want to be Im Imagineers. And then there's the second group of, of people who just want to be Imagineers. And it's that first group who usually end up becoming Imagineers because at the end of the day, you know, Imagineering's looking for experts in their field. So that means you need to work in that field and be good in that field without being involved with Disney. So if you're just in it to be a Disney Imagineer, you know, you're not going to get very far because they're not hiring people right out of the gate. They're hiring people who have some experience or, you know, who show great talent outside of their own realm. Uh, and I'm glad that he sort of highlights that because, you know, it, it strikes a really nice balance between the realism of, you know, this is how you can make it as an Imagineer and how you won't. And that optimism of anybody can become an Imagineer if you really have that passion for it. You just need to be able to, to get there. Um, 
And I think it's very interesting too, because a lot of these, you know, excerpts were coming from different people over different eras of Disney, yet there are these very familiar chains and themes that go across all of them, which shows that, you know, even though they obviously know that they're writing for a book that people are gonna read, they're being honest about what Imagineering is like. There are some pretty, I'd say, brutally honest paragraphs in here about things like recognition and how you're probably not gonna get any if you're an Imagineer. At the end of the day, there's one name on the door is what they say, and that's true. You know, we as fans will think of famous Imagineers, but for the most part, you know, it's all just a Disney ride. Anyway, it's an easy read. I think it's totally worth it. Again, Marty Sklar is a Disney legend, and I think anything he puts out is worth uh, reading. I think anything he says is worth listening to. I think it provides a lot of insight to both the history of the company and sort of the, the creative direction that Disney has taken when it comes to the parks. Anyway, if you've read this book, I would love to hear what you think about it. Let me know in the comments below, or you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Rob Plays. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. I do three a week. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. And I'll see you next time when I pick another Disney book to review. Maybe one of those. Or maybe a new one. Who knows? I don't plan that far ahead.